Hello, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome to News Writing Virtual Style. Blah. Wait, I, I have like a laugh track here. Yeah, there's an applause for me. Um, we don't want to do a boo for me, no. How about a ta-da? There it is. That's what we need in a little drum roll. Drum roll. Well, that's a really long drum roll. Okay, <laughs> um, things that I've picked up in the virtual world. So we're going to talk about news writing today. Now, for your student activities conference, we are doing virtual, and you have some choices. This is the full news writing um, PowerPoint, but there's also a choice where it's broken into two separate PowerPoints, and it's a little bit different. So you have choices this year. We don't get to see each other in real life, but at least you have some choices. So let's start talking about news writing for the UIL journalism contest. Ooh, no, I should learn how to advance, huh? Okay, <clears throat> so news writing. It's going to give the reader information. We're going to give you a prompt and you're going to write a news story from the prompt. You're going to go from most important to least important. Your prompt is going to have a situation. Then we're going to look at a prompt in just a second so you can see what it looks like. You're going to have a situation and then you're going to have quotes from a lot of people. And then you're going to get 45 minutes to write a news story. And you're like, okay, but why? Why do I participate in this contest? It's painful. It really isn't painful. But one of the best reasons to participate in this contest is because if you win at district, if you win first, second, or third at district, you get to advance to regionals, which is you'll get to go to a really cool place for regionals. Well, it'll be outside of your town. So that'll be cool. Probably it'll be outside of town. I guess some people won't go out of town. But anyways, back to it. So if you win first, second, or third at regionals, then you get to come to state. And if you come to state, you are eligible for TILF scholarships. And every year, TILF gives away lots and lots of money to UIL state competitors. So that's a really, really good reason to do this contest and to do well in it. And so we're going to talk about how you do well. So news stories are, like, these are just some general characteristics. They're objective. That means they're fair and balanced. A lot of our news stories have controversy in them. So it's really important that you have both sides represented in your story. If it's a story about a new dress code and the administration is all for the new dress code, well, right, yeah. So you're going to put quotes from the new administration about how wonderful it is and how important it is. But then maybe your student body is like, Oh, wait, I can do, this is what they think. Nice. That's a really long raspberry. Um, <laughs> that's kind of frightening. Anyways, so your student body doesn't like it. So you need quotes from the other side that don't like the dress code. You want it fair and balanced. And then in a news story, anything that is not an absolute fact needs to be attributed. And what attributed means is that it's whoever said the information. It's like Jeannie Acton said. It has to be attributed if it's not an absolute fact for news stories. That's super important. That'll get you dinged in contests really quickly. Uh, news stories are also written in third person. They're written in inverted pyramid. Oh my gosh, it says inverted period style. <laughs> inverted pyramid style. I'm going to fix that, but I'm going to keep going with this. Um, we also have short paragraphs. We Our paragraphs are about 30 to 60 words in journalism, which is two to three sentences. The rule is, is you can never have a paragraph that's too short in journalism, but you can have paragraphs that are too long. Um, they're also accurate. We give you the prompt. We give you all the information. Make sure that when you transfer it to your paper and you write the story that it's accurate. Timely, they follow the transition quote formula. We're going to get into that. And then they're, they're also written concisely, and we use active voice. To be concise in our writing, we use active voice. That means the subject does the action. So Jeannie threw the football is active voice. The football was thrown by Jeannie is passive voice, and it takes a lot more words. Sometimes we need passive voice. Sometimes it can't be avoided, but we try to mostly write an active voice. So here's the inverted period. <laughs> Actually, it's the inverted pyramid. Um, sorry about that. And what it is, it's really simple. And for <clears throat> this contest, you want to use this. We go from the most important information down to the least important information. That's all inverted pyramid style is, is what, what the readers need to know most down to what the readers need to know least. Because our idea is, is that sometimes people are going to stop reading halfway through the story and we want to make sure we get them the most important information that they need to know first. Now, <clears throat> we also use the transition. Ooh, look at that. Um, I do it. 
da, da. I should have a sound effect when that comes in, right? Oh, let's do it backwards again. Ready? Oh, I was a little off. Yeah, well, you know, close. So this is the transition. I, I, I'm all by myself. I got to have some fun. Um, <laughs> otherwise, I could. This is the transition quote formula. Woohoo. Okay, we don't really want it to be like that, right? You have to sit through this. So at least let's have some sound effects along the way. Okay, so transition quote formula is the formula that I want you to use in this formula in news writing can get you all the way to state. So each one of these blue boxes represents a paragraph. Remember our paragraphs are 30 to 60 words. Our first paragraph is our lead. It is the newest, most important information. It's the news peg. That is so important for you to wrap your head around that in a news story, you always want to give the reader the newest information. So that's our lead. Now, sometimes we can't get all the newest, most important information in the lead. It, we can't fit it in two sentences. So we'll need an additional information paragraph that gives us additional information that's really important to the story before we start going into our direct quotes. Now, the way UIL contests work is that our invitational meets are pretty, those contests are pretty easy. Districts a little bit harder, regionals a little bit harder, and states even harder. So usually, at the invitational level and at the district level, you probably don't need that additional information paragraph because your story is not super complicated. But the more complicated the story is, the more information you've got to get to your reader quickly. So often you'll need that paragraph. Then we're going to have a direct quote that either links to the lead or to the additional information paragraph. And what that means is, is that direct quote is going to give the how, the why. It's going to give more information about what's going on in the lead. And I'll show you an example of that so it makes sense to you. Then we go straight into our transition direct quote formula. We have a transition, and that is followed by a direct quote, and then another transition, and then another direct quote, and so on until the story is complete. Now, people ask me, how do I know when the story is complete? When you've got, when you're done telling the reader everything they need to know. There's not a set word count. I'm not going to give that to you. It's when your story is complete. News stories will range between 300 and 500 words. That's a big range. It depends on how complicated the prompt is and what's all in the prompt. So what your reader needs to know, that's how long the story needs to be. So we're going to start at the beginning with leads because it's really important that you understand what goes in your lead. Your lead, it's the most important information. It focuses on the future. It focuses on the new information. That's the thing that you've got to get. When I was a teacher, um, I will tell you right now, I never took a student all the way to state in news writing. And I can't figure out why, because we practiced and we focused on the newest information. And before we would go into the meet, they would go in, they'd get to regionals and they'd get ready to go in for the contest. And I'm like, newest, newest, newest information, news pick, news pick, news pick. We'd have little chants and little cheers. They'd go in. 45 minutes later, they would come out and I'd say, okay, so what was your lead? Did you get the newest information? And they'd look at me and they're like, oh. And I'm like, really? And so we never advanced out of regionals for news writing. So you do better than my students did. Focus on that newest information. That's what, what has to go into your, uh-oh, uh where we go? Into your lead. So most leads for the news writing contest are summary leads okay they're going to be based on the five w's and the h and if we were live i'd say what is the five w's and the h and somebody in the audience would be like i got this so who what where when why and how yay and i would throw candy at you and it would all be awesome Wah! but unfortunately we're not live so i can't throw candy at you um it would be weird if i threw it at my computer and it might hurt my computer so we'll get back to the contest here so they're usually summary leads um, they summarize the most important W's and H of the story. You may not get all of the five W's and H on your lead because they may not all be relevant and important to your story. So if we have five W's and H, we have six different types of leads. We have who leads, when leads, where leads, why leads, how leads, blah, 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 all of those. So rarely do we want to start our story with the who, the when, or the where. There are times when we may, but rarely are we going to do that. For instance, the where all of these prompts happen in League Town. So you could start every story, every news story in League Town. Well, if everybody else in the room is starting the same way, it's not going to be good. And in League Town is boring. People already know where they live, right? They don't need that information. So 
we don't, it's not usually the most important information, the who, the when, or the where, so that's why we don't usually start with those. We prefer to start with the what, the how, or the why, because it's usually more interesting and it's usually more important. Not always, but usually. So here's a who lead that we want to avoid. Principal Joe Blow announced Tuesday that students will no longer be allowed to leave campus for lunch. Okay, we're starting with the principal. He's not that exciting. So we don't want to start with the who on that one. Um, they're boring. And it's an easy, easy way to start. And we don't want those easy ways to start. Now, again, if we were in person, I'd say, oh, how could we fix this? So it wouldn't start with somebody's name. And somebody would say, I got this. And they'd be like, you, you, you do it. And they would say, we could just flip it and say, students will no longer be allowed to leave for campus for lunch. Principal Joe Blow announced Tuesday. Absolutely. Now, students is a who, but it's a general who. And it's more relevant to your students on your campus. So it makes more sense than starting with somebody's name. Okay, now there is a big but. There's an, ooh, what happens if Thor comes to your town? Oh, Thor, he's so pretty. Okay, so if Thor comes to your town, you can have him lead your lead. <laughs> he can be the first words in your story because he's so important. Actor Chris Helmsworth, who plays Thor in the Marvel movies, will visit the high school Thursday to talk to students about the importance of being a real life superhero. So because it's somebody um you know really big somebody new like if george Strait came to the town or donald trump um joe biden we got to be equal here um if anybody really um i guess um and i don't want to say that because they're all everybody's important but somebody famous you might want to start with them that would probably be okay to start with their name but unfortunately famous people rarely come to leave town so a when lead on Tuesday. You could start every lead with on Tuesday, or maybe it is on Wednesday, whatever it is. So we, something, everything's, everything's always connected to a date, right? Or a day of the week. We want to make sure that it makes sense and that it's the most important thing. So on Tuesday, Joe, Principal Joe Blow announced that students will only be able to leave campus for lunch. That's really not what we want to do. And really, we don't even want to start with on Thursday, actor Chris Hel because actor Chris Helmsworth is way more important than the Thursday part. So think about that. Um, now, if you have a very unique win, that may be okay, okay, during a school pep rally, or if the date is super important, if something really big is happening tomorrow, then that could make sense in using starting with a when lead. But just like on Tuesday or on Wednesday or in March, really we wanted to probably try to avoid those types of leads. And where leads, everything happens in league town and a whole lot happens at a school board meeting. So let's not start with that because that's pretty boring. Um, but if you have a really specific where that's relevant, like in the principal's office, the senior class built a mini go-kart to protest the cancellation of the parking on campus, that kind of makes sense. Um, that that where is okay, but at in a at a school board meeting or in League Town, no, no, no. I wonder if I have a no, no, no in my sound effects. I don't. I don't have a no, no, no. I have a snore. Oh, I do have a snore. That's pretty good. Okay, so this is the type of lead we're looking for. This is the kind of lead that's better. If a group of parents can't change Principal John Roberts' mind about his ban on the 2019 class t-shirts, seniors say they might wear the shirts to school Friday, an act that could get them suspended. Okay, we're not starting with the where, we're not starting with the when or the who, okay? Here's another one. After driving a sick student to an urgent care clinic in his personal car, varsity football coach Ned Winters faces possible termination for violating district policy. Again, solid lead. After four, excuse me, can't speak. When you're all by yourself doing a video, it's hard to speak. After four car accidents last month, Principal Stan Lebowski announced Friday that seniors will not be able to leave campus during lunch. And that's a why. Why they're not going to get to leave? We're going to lead with a why. It's a much better lead. So now that we know the type of lead we're looking for, and we know some general characteristics about news stories, I want you, and this is the cool thing about this, is that you can pause, because see, when I do this in real life, I have a really hard time keeping my mouth shut when I ask y'all to write. So you can pause it. That's the cool thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a lead. And I say we, because I want you to do it too, okay? Um, I've already done it. So, so, so read the entire prompt, find the newest information in the prompt, 
beware of older, more controversial stuff. Cause often you think, Ooh, I gotta go with all that really controversial stuff. Not if it's old news, it might be within your lead, but it's not the most important part of your lead. Then I want you to write a one to two sentences summarizing the new news using as many of the W's and H's as possible or that are relevant to the story. Make sure you write in third person. You don't need the word league town unless there's more than one town. Don't editorialize. Remember, we're going to have objective. That means your opinion stays out of it. So we're writing in third person and your opinion stays out of it. So this is the prop that we're looking at. Um, and it's about adulting day, <laughs> which I, I thought was really um, interesting when I read about this a couple of years ago. So this is the prompt. I want you to read it. This is page one. So pause and read it. Tick, 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 tock. I don't think I have a tick, tock, tick, tock. Okay. So you pause and now here's page two. And again, you pause and you read the whole thing. Once you've read the whole thing, write a lead. Okay. So. I'm assuming that you've already written your lead. So let's talk about what's essential for this lead. You've already read the prompt, you wrote your lead or your best attempt and you know, it's okay, no one's gonna see it. So what I think is essential for this lead is the must haves. Students will sign up for adulting day through an online portal, okay? That's, that's the new stuff. The portal opens tomorrow, super important. And adulting day is set for April 9th. Now, there are a lot of other things that are going on in this prompt. We've got, you know, we've got need to talk about adulting day and the sessions that are offered and all of those things are going to go within the story, but they're not going to go in the very beginning because the most important thing that kids need to know, the students need to know, because they've already heard about adulting day. It's been talked about some in the school. So what they have to know is that tomorrow you get to sign up for those classes. Okay, so we've got to make sure that we always have a time element in our news lead. Okay, so here's one example, an online sign up portal, 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 portal for the senior adulting day opens at 7 a.m. tomorrow and closes at 9 p.m. Friday. Seniors may choose their first, second, and third choice from 12 seminars for the day. Adulting day will be April 9th. Okay, it's got all of the must-haves. Now your lead might look a little bit different and that's okay. But we have to have in there that that online sign up portal opens tomorrow and that adulting day will be April 9th. Those things have to be in your lead. You may have other things in there too, but those things have to. Here's another possible lead we could have done. Starting tomorrow, students can use an online portal to choose their three choices for adulting day, which is set for April 9th. Those are my emails dinging in. Sorry about that. Ooh, new sound effects. The online portal closes at 9 p.m. Friday. Then we opted to have an additional information paragraph. Counselors will assign seminars to seniors who do, oh, I should say do not submit their preferences. Two typos, I should have read this better. Two typos, who do not submit their preferences. So either one, now this one does start with a when, but it's a, this is a big deal. The date is very important because it's tomorrow and they've got to pick those. Otherwise they're going to get assigned. So this when start kind of makes sense for this story. So we've kind of wrapped your head around leads. It's the newest, most important information that we're going to give to the reader. Now we've got to talk about direct quotes and we have this little handsome man um, to help us. He'd be cute. We should name him sometime. Okay, so direct quotes. The key is in news stories is to find the people and quotes that matter the most. So when you're reading that prompt, when you're in the contest and you have the physical prompt in front of you and you see quotes that are really powerful, that give really important information, what just happened, uh, circle them, highlight them, do whatever you need to do because you need to make sure that the most important people are quoted in your story and that the most important quotes from those people are in your story. Um, and I put in just like silly quotes into the prompts because it's your job to figure out what matters and what doesn't to the story. So direct quotes, here's some characteristics of direct quotes. Oh, look at all those coming in. So they can be longer than one sentence. Often they are, often it's two, the people we use about two sentences. Um, we really want the attribution to be after the first sentence of the quote when you have a direct quote. So quotation marks, I am awesome, comma, quotation marks, Jeannie Acton said, period, 
then quotation marks, then the second sentence. Attribution, we really want it to be noun and verb. And remember, we're not going to have two people's direct quotes right next to each other without a transition because we wouldn't be following the transition quote formula. So <clears throat> more characteristics about direct quotes. We don't want them to repeat the transition or leave before them. It's called an echo quote. For instance, here's a transition. AP English teacher Carson Weekly said missing one day of class is not going to be a disaster for seniors. Seniors can miss a day of class and it won't be a disaster, she said. That quote says exactly what the transition says. It's called an echo quote. We don't want to see that. We want to make sure that our quotes give more details, give specifics, tell the hows, tell the whys, give the emotion, whatever, but they need to give more, not the same thing. Okay, so direct quotes, we want them to be linked to the transition before them. So for example, these parents also reached out to Superintendent Adam Levy and asked to either make the day optional for students or add academic-based options. I have no plans of changing anything, Levy said. I understand the parents' concerns, but I have spoken with several teachers and the administrative team. None of them feel like this day will negatively impact student test scores. So that quote expands on that transition, and that's how we want this story to go. We want to have a transition, and the quote expands on it, gives more detail, gives us the how, the why, but they're linked, they're connected, they're dating, oh, whatever you call it nowadays, but that's a couple. <laughs> the transition and the direct quote are a couple. La la, we'll have a marriage later. So here's the, the this is the lead that we, um, one of the leads that we saw, okay, in the first quote of the story. So let's look at this. And that's for the prompt that we read. I got to move my face here so that we can read the whole thing. Oh, I'm moving around. An online uh, sign up portal for Senior Adulting Day opens at 7 a.m. tomorrow and closes at 9 p.m. Friday. Seniors may choose their first, second, or third choice from 12 different ooh, seminars <laughs> for the day. Adulting <clears throat> Day will be April 9th. Each seminar will be capped at 30, and counselors will assign seminars to those who do not submit their preferences in time. So our first direct quote of the story, I plan to pick my classes at 7.01 a.m. on Wednesday, Senior Kelly Clarkville said. I want to make sure I get my first two choices, basic car care and personal finance. I finally saved enough money to buy a used car and I want to know how to take care of it. So it's definitely more than one sentence, kind of a longer quote, but this quote that follows this, it explains that she's, we're talking about telling students Online portals open, get those choices made, or their counselors are gonna do it for you. So our first quote is from a student, which makes sense, because it's a student newspaper, so we wanna make sure that our students are high in the story. And it, it talks about that she's signing up and what she's gonna pick. So that's a good quote to use right there. So what comes next? Okay, so we have our lead, our additional paragraph, our first quote, and now we're gonna go into our transition quote, formula. So our first transition, the counselor suggested adulting day after attending a conference in Kentucky where many schools have implemented similar programs. Okay, so here's our first transition. Now we've got it. What's going to come next? And somebody would go, oh, I know, I know, I know. It's a direct quote, Jenny. And I'm like, yes, you got it. You got it. So proud of you. And I say, well, who's the direct quote probably going to be from? Because in the transition, it says the counselors. So it would make sense, right, if the transition's got the counselors in it, that the quote that follows is probably going to be from the counselors. Let's see. Oh, let, we could do a drum roll here. Drum roll. Drum roll. I guess I could actually just do a drum roll on my desk. Well, you know. And looky there, our direct quote is from a counselor. Our students are graduating from high school lacking basic survival skills, counselor Jackie Hoot said. We no longer teach home economics, personal finance, or auto mechanics, and as a result, our students are suffering. Okay, so that quote expands on that transition. Counselor was in the transition, makes sense that counselor is in the direct quote. So what follows this? More transitions and, and <laughs> transitions and quotes all linked together. For the day, seniors will choose two three-hour seminars. The lists include personal finance, dorm cooking, resume, and cover letter writing, and household chores. My first choice is going to be dorm cooking, but I can't decide about the other seminar and my backup, Senior Blake. 
Shelton said. Can you tell that I was watching The Voice when I wrote this one? I am headed to Princeton in the fall and will be staying in the dorms. I want to know how to cook more pop <clears throat> more than popcorn, which is about all I can cook right now. The district, will, so that quote expands on that transition. Next transition is the district will provide $8,000 to bring in professionals and provide supplies for hands-on activities in each course. Some of the seminar topics <clears throat> or ideas directly from seniors, Principal Gwen Steffen said. After the counselors pitched this idea to me in January, I bought, <clears throat> brought in a group of seniors and asked them about the idea, she said. They loved it and suggested the Healthy Relationship Seminar and the Household Chores Seminar. So again, the quote expands on the transition before it, and the principal was quoted in this transition, so it makes sense that the principal is in the quote that follows. So we get really good story flow. So, you figure out who's important to your story and which quotes are essential to your story. I'm going to tell you right now, every news story that you do for a UIL news writing contest better have a student quote in it because it's a student newspaper, so their voices matter. So let's move a little bit on to transitions now with this cute, handsome little man. <clears throat> so transitions, I hate all caps and I hate the word very. Please don't use those in your story, very. That's bad. Um, but look, I have very, very important because the transitions are what holds the story together. It links the paragraphs together. There's three types of transitions. There can be a fact, an indirect quote, or a partial quote. And we've seen some of those transitions already. So a fact transition. For the day, seniors will choose two three-hour seminars. The list includes blah, 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 blah. It's a fact transition. We don't have to say somebody said that because it's just a fact. Okay, makes sense? Next type of transition is an indirect quote transition. Some of the seminar topic I, <clears throat> topics were ideas directly from seniors, Principal Gwen Stefan said. Again, this is um, what she said. We're going to attribute it um, because there could be somebody who's like, no, -uh, no, they weren't from seniors. So we want to know who said that they were from seniors. Anything that we waver just a little bit that may not be an absolute fact, we want to put an attribution. I'd rather you have an attribution on a fact then not have an attribution on an opinion um, for a news story. It's super important that everything is attributed that is not 100% a fact. So in an indirect quote transition, what it is, is is when we take what somebody else has said in a direct quote and we put it in our words, so it's not word for word, so there's no quotation marks, but the meaning is still the same. So the meaning is the same, but the words are different. And then we have a partial quote transition, and that's when Somebody uses a word that's pretty emphatic and it wouldn't make sense if it wasn't in quotes. So we would put that piece, that one word or two words in quotes. So AP, AP English teacher Carson Weekly said, missing one day is not going to be a disaster for seniors because there were so many parents complaining about this and they're like, oh, it's gonna be awful. So we put the quote marks around there so that they could see that, that she said that, that wasn't a word that the writer came up with. So more about transitions. Um, if you Google transitional words, it'll give you this long old list of transitional words. In the beginning, when you first start writing news stories, it will probably help you to use transitional words so that you can see the paragraphs linking together. As you become a more proficient writer, you'll start dropping them. You'll use them some. Um, we use the word also. These parents also reached out to Superintendent Adam Levy and asked him either make the day optional for students or add academic based options. So again, um, we used also, but you um, can use them in the beginning and you'll still use a few, but you won't use them in every transition as you continue. So where do transitions come from? We get them from the direct quotes that are on the prompt and then also from the situation piece, which is at the very beginning of the prompt. Um, something that I want you to be really careful with your transitions is, is I see it all the time as we use weak words. We use words like some students or most students. Um, those are really, really general. Okay. And you can't, you can't do that. You can't say most students because you didn't interview most students. Okay. So just tell me which student, just tell me, quote that student, Jeannie Acton said. Um, if a teacher says most students like this, then you say most students like this, comma, and you gotta attribute that to somebody, okay? Because otherwise you're saying it and you didn't interview most students. So here's an example of 
where our transition came from, okay? So this is a chunk right up here. This is a chunk of quote from the prompt. And she said, some of the seminars were ideas from our students. That's her word for word. We took it and we changed it. It's pretty similar, but same meeting, different words. Some of the seminar topics were ideas directly from seniors, Principal Gwen Stephan said. It's an intercope indirect quote transition we got it from her quote and then we used and then we just pulled a quote from it to follow it makes sense we also can get transitions from the situation this is at the very beginning of the prompt um, and right here students will choose two three hour seminars on topics blah, blah 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 from that we made a transition that's a fact it's not attributed to anybody it's presented to us as a fact so we don't have to attribute it in our story so that's a fact transition. So that's where we're gonna get our transitions from. So let's review, oh, and if we were here, we would do this all together. So what can you use to create your transitions? We just said it. You can use the situation and you can use direct quotes. What should you avoid starting your lead with? I know you're like, oh, I wanna answer so bad. I know, I know you know this. You wanna avoid the when, the where, and the who leads. What is attribution and what needs to be attributed in a new story? Attribution is who said it and almost everything needs to be attributed unless it's an absolute fact, you don't have to attribute it. Who should be quoted in your story? The most important people, always, always a student. Uh oh, can't see this one. My face is on it. Following a transition, what should a direct quote do? Somebody's like, oh, please call on me. You, I'm calling on you. Me? Yeah, you. Okay, okay. It's like multiple personalities. I'm like, ooh. Um, following a transition, what should a direct quote do? A direct quote should elaborate on the transition. It's going to tell us details, give us more information. What can a transition be? Three different things, indirect quote, fact, or partial quote. And finally, what is a must-have for your lead? Dun, dun. Ooh, drum roll. Oh, I can do a real drum roll. What is a must-have? A must-have is the time element. It's the newest time element. It is the news peg of your story. Super, super important. So just say no. Just say no to drugs and also just say no to these things. Don't use the word league town unless I've got two schools in your prompt. I keep trying to move my face around here. Um, don't write a feature lead. Save that for the feature contest. Don't add facts. If something hasn't been approved by the school board, don't approve it, okay? Make sure your opinion stays out of it, okay? If you want editorial, um, if you want to editorialize, then you go get in that editorial contest. Um, don't use first or second person. Guys, if you are gonna handwrite, you can use a computer in this contest. You can use a laptop and bring a portable printer, which means any printer you can carry. So if you're gonna write, um, if you're going to handwrite, make sure that we can read it because it's really, really frustrating. I'm getting lots of emails today. Woo, super popular, Jamie. I'm um, sorry, I am off track again. Um, so um, if you're going to handwrite, make sure that it's legible, that we can read it because it's so frustrating when we think we have a good paper, but we don't know because we can't read it because the handwriting is messy. Skip lines, that always helps. Um, that helps, it gives the judge places to write comments but it also helps um, to make it easier to read. Uh, make sure your paragraphs are not longer than 30 to 60 words. Y'all don't indent anymore, which I don't know why. So skip a line so that we know it's a new paragraph. I don't know. Don't misspell the names and the stories. I mean, I give you the names. They're in bold, they're in all caps. You gotta transfer it to your paper. It really shouldn't be that hard and it'll ding you. It's a big one, oh no. Um, and plus, all the people in League Town will be super sad and they will be crying and crying and crying. They will be super, super sad if you um, misspell their name. Can't use all the information, you only have 45 minutes. You choose what's important. You're not going to stack quotes because you're going to use that transition quote formula and you're going to stay away from those most students, some students for your transitions. So checklist. Um, most important recent facts first. Remember we're using the inverted pyramid, not the inverted period. <laughs> I wonder what that would look like. Uh, well, um, is the story accurate? Are the sources identified fully? So the first time you mention somebody, you need to identify who they are completely. Jeannie Acton, uh, UIL journalism director said, okay, so identify them fully. For a student, their identification is maybe they're a sophomore, they're a senior, maybe they're the football team captain, whatever it is, identify them. Uh, use first and last names on first reference. 
Are the paragraphs short? Talked about that. Sentence structure varied. Double space. Does your story flow? Active voice. We've said all these things. These are things that you want to look for. We want to make sure you get the news peg in your lead. We want to use the transition quote formula and you want to use the correct sources and quotes for your story. So this is a um, suggestion for contest day. What I would say, read the prompt all the way through and then come back and look for the newest information. Underline it, circle it, whatever you want to do. Find the most important W's and H. It really may not be all five, okay? Um, and then highlight, circle, whatever, the most essential people and quotes for your story and scratch out the bad ones. Because what often happens, and you can tell when you're judging, is that a student's got a really good first half of the paper. And then all of a sudden, like quotes are just randomly in there, transitions are randomly in there. Because what happens is, is they're, you know, they're writing, they're going along, woo, and then somebody says, oh, you have 10 minutes. They're like, ah, I still have half my story to go. So then they start dropping everything in. Well, they're picking the wrong stuff because they didn't do any of this work in the in the beginning if you scratch out the stupid quotes you won't accidentally put them in your story when you're under a time pressure so then write your lead additional paragraph if you need it a direct quote and then go straight into that transition direct quote formula and keep going until you're finished with your story um, ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for joining me today that's my name that's my email um, if you have any questions about news writing um, please, please reach out to me. For every prompt we write in the UIL office, there's always a sample story in the tip sheet. So if you wanna see the sample story and tip sheet for the prompt that is in this uh, video, just email me and I'll send it to you. But write your story first and then you can compare our sample story. Well, our sample story isn't perfect, but it's an idea of what we wanna see. Good luck and I hope to see all of you in May in person. Um, if we can't hug, we could elbow, I don't know, do something. Um, I miss people. Uh, Y'all have a fantastic day. Oh.